technical. I feel like the hippies on like the short bus right now. Um, but like essentially what we're trying to do is create a reflective teaching tool um, for next semester's class. Um, also, another thing is like we kind of want it to be useful for explaining to possible um, fund givers <coughs> what the experience is like for all of us. Um, so what you see on the board is basically like different locations or like nodes of just general value, we think, and then we kind of just iterated on each one and like gave either specific examples or scenarios we each experienced. Um, and what we really want to do is like somehow place this in the context of the big and little squiggle. Um, and we're going to like turn each of these nodes into some type of artifact. Like this is just like ideas we've had or how they can relate to each node. Um, and then use those artifacts in the big and little squiggle, like as a much larger uh, presentation. Um, but yeah, just like as a frame of reference, we want to first, we're going to like introduce you to some of the nodes of what we think are valuable so you guys can get an idea of what we're thinking along the lines of. And then on the back of the room over there, you can see like we have questions posted. Um, a lot of it we want you to be pretty, pretty specific and broad. So like we want you to share like what you feel about the themes of this course and how that was represented in like specific scenarios or like interactions you've had um, through this through the course thus far. Um, and then we're going to take that information and resynthesize it with what we have and like pick out the most valuable ones and then develop the the actual artifact. see there's a lot of value in our own experiences and like how we confronted some of those topics and like even the design process especially in line with bioethics so being able to try and like take that experience or whatever value we found and turning it into an artifact or some form of medium that can provide for students to try and help them get past these like bumps or even like I guess aha moments or all these different areas but also where it can provide like a product to I guess fundraisers and stuff like that, really what we try and do here and what students kind of how they grow or how they get past and how they develop through the big and little squiggle. Yeah. And I think a, a, like a fundamental problem, at least I had in, from who we talked to, I think they agreed with us, is that um, a lot of my uh, time spent in studios, especially in the beginning, was not that effective because they didn't really understand how the design process worked, especially uh, when you so I think giving students like perspectives, like we talked about, like some of the other groups talked about bringing in outside um, perspectives to help the students. But I think uh, like a really important perspective is obviously the students that took the course before you, uh, before them. Uh, so I think giving them some kind of idea or like a really like a resource like this that would kind of take them through the big and little school, explain the design process uh, and how it uh, applies to biological issues is something that would be really important for me if I were a new student to take coming into the next class just to see you know, how it works and how I should spend my time in the student. Do you want to walk through some of these? Yeah, one note that really affected me was one person um, said how they never thought of themselves as creative before this class. And I think that I identified a lot with that just in how a lot of the traditional class structures don't give you a way to express yourself in a way that you find meaningful or 
in a way that isn't as free as this, like you can kind of just do whatever you want, do it in any direction you want. Very, you know, the beginnings, the prompts of projects have relatively few constraints compared to other classes with like the, you know, I'm so used to hearing the whole, like the spiel of 12 point Times New Roman font, double space, like that's very, I hear that you all forgot the time. to mention One inch more. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so just like I, so I feel like this class, I mean, even uh, through much frustration, it still cre provided a creative outlet that did not does not exist in a lot of ways. And like the the way the artifact fit in is like for something like that, we thought about either like animating some type of experience of like being in a group setting and like everybody else is like conversing and someone else is just like sitting there with question marks above their head. But like we want it to be like expressive, so it's like an ex you know it's more of an experience than like a telling you. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate um, what I said about uh, how going into this, I didn't really understand how the process worked. Uh, one of the points we have up here is uh, research is the foundation for any project and its success. And uh, a couple of points that we kind of expanded upon that was one, one that I wrote, which I always thought I needed to think of an idea first and then research it, but uh, it's the other way around. And I think that's really important because I'm a very linear, I think very linearly. So I, I, I went into a lot of assignments just like, all right, idea generation, let's figure out what we're gonna do like really, really quickly before I really knew the subject matter underneath that. And I think that it wasn't until either last project or even this project where I realized like from extensive talks with Arjun that I really needed to uh, you know, go and look at that book case and like find books and like learn the material and then like the ideas just kind of come to you as you get a better understanding of the material. I think that was a, a kind of a uh, revelation for me um, kind of designing something that uh, expresses that idea to students when they come to the class is something that's really important and, and would help uh, facilitate the, the learning process and design process. I guess you want to think about uh, what we're thinking about. Sorry. Should, should we? Have we opened comments yet? Okay, you guys yeah, yeah, open more. We're, we're open. Just we're open. open. No, we need back. We're, we're, we're trying. Trying. No, no, we can like walk through. I was just going to say that, uh, should we say something about what we're thinking about the, the, the greater medium? Obviously, these yeah, are mediums that we're thinking about expressing each of these little things in, but the greater medium we're thinking about, um, like an interactive online, maybe like a big little, little swivel, like me personally, something like, um, I don't know if you want to say something about it, but um, like an interactive big little swivel where you can click on parts of the swivel and zoom in and you'll, and you'll see, like some of these obviously fit into more of the big swivel creative uh, part of the process, while some are more, uh, once you get to the small swivel, are more direct. So I think having something interactive online like that would be something more that the students would use rather than, we were also thinking of like a pamphlet or something like that. But almost something like um, if you go online and like want to look at like stars or like solar systems, it might be just like manipulate like around and like in and out. <coughs> Something else we po possibly talked about doing was maybe like a two minute, two and a half minute video where you would literally travel through the squiggle and like stop at certain points and like experience a node and then like move through um, all the way to the end. That sounds so, those sound cool, but uh, um, I just think we should table the conversation just for a minute about the medium because it's not clear, like what you said before saying this, what you're trying to accomplish with that? Like, because when would that happen? When students, when would students look at that? Before they start their first project, or like along the way, or do you have an idea? Well, I think that would require the type of value that we derive not only from what we already have, but from what you know other people contribute. Mm -hmm. um, because if we can develop like an actual narrative and tell a story of the course, then I think it is most valuable to do it at the very beginning with a video in that format. But if it's more of an inspiration tool with like, you know, random nodes located all along the big and little squiggle and like a 3D interactive device like that, then perhaps that would be better something to just exist for the whole course and like, um, Could you yeah. actually put those down so I can post it up somewhere? So what are the options? I'd like to hear the options. So, uh, 
tell the story to the uninitiated or unprepared, is that right? I'm sorry? You're, so one option is like telling the story. The studio version. <laughs> yeah, so the studio version. <coughs> Could you write it down? Tell the story. Studio version. Yeah. Studio oh, version. <laughs> To the uninitiated, yeah. people who are either like just starting or interested. Oh, yeah. So wait, well even that, like people who are as a piece. Is it prep material? So put it down studio version. Yeah, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> T-shirt. You're saying studio yeah. version. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought she said. <laughs> version, it's not a version. But there's also like, so are you preparing? Are you uh, advertising it? Are you um, fundraising? Like in that or other version of it? I said version, but could you write those down? Like are there other things? Are these two, two, like students at the first day of class or the beginning of class? Or are they two um, the two people who basically who sign up for class? Basically, give us my really personal way you tell the story. Probably. It probably could be useful in the effect that right. they always like. You might want to do it for a And you're constantly failing, and you're looking for kind of something to root yourself. Some Something like this from like previous students that's like a concrete way of explaining kind of like their experience with the squiggle. Even though, yes, it could help in the beginning just to orient you to the design process and stuff sure. like that. Even in the moment, like that's kind of what we felt like. You hit so many walls, and you do have aha moments and low points and all of those. and like. This could facilitate actually like in any of those moments. Okay, so that's like a, that's more like what Jesse was saying. That's a different option, and and at that point, I don't know if it's a, it would be best to serve as a story to like as a source of inspiration or a tool yeah. along the way. Like, so yeah. put that down like a tool. Yeah, I think um, one thing that, that, that came up was like using it as a tool to drive people to content. So just that, like these, uh, uh, using our experiences because that's what we think we have to offer. That's something of value is our unique experience. This, but in that, it's a tool that it then pushes them into like a new direction of like, oh, what if we like, you know, actually took advantage of the books because like they took advantage, of, they, they found value in that, or um, they're not get, get, kind of yeah, just spurt like kind of pushing them forward. I see, is how I kind of saw it. Yeah. So sorry, one more question. Have you guys ever read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Or anybody? I saw the BBC special. Oh yeah. <laughs>
building out the ideas like say you hit some node and it's like you're struggling with something, an activity where it's like that. Yeah. Like, try this and like this has been effective. I think there's tons of things like that, especially right. like you're having an issue with your group dynamic, like listening activities. There's tons of things where you can see like maybe I don't listen well, like I do need to reorient and try things like that. So what if this is like, like a product that doesn't really directly communicate it to the students, but rather you use it as, build it out, use it as your sort of like base guiding principles for developing that sort of exercise. Mm -hmm. So like the, these are your desiderata, these are the things, the experiences that you want to take these students and learn by doing each of these, and it also provides that some sort of framework so they can get that insight like after doing it, each thing or, or larger things. We had a project but it was just like the purpose of that is just to get you thinking about bioethics, just thinking about design. Like it wasn't scaffolded to hit a specific area. So I don't think we we're trying to do either fundraising or like a teaching tool for next semester. I think we we're trying to do both. Um, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're trying if we could, because clearly we're at this kind of phase where we have a choice. So it would be nice if we could do both at the same time. Yeah, so maybe we could design it at two different levels. One that would be like a storytelling method, like for a fundraiser, and then the other would be like some way for them to interact with those same like valuable nodes in some productive way. But that's what I'm saying. Why do you see that them interacting with the information directly, rather than you using this design and experience where they learn it by doing it? sit there and like huff and puff because I had nothing to work with and I was like no don't worry the idea is going to come to me <laughs> and it never came until I actually opened a book and like I didn't even know what I was looking for which is like kind of like the funny part about it but like I came out with like new ideas and like I feel like if someone if someone showed this to me I could just be a little bit less stubborn about it and uh I don't know, I just think it would be extremely helpful. Like there's so many times in this class where I was like so frustrated. I was like, they're not giving us any direction, but like that was the point. And like, I feel like just like having that organized in some sort of like accessible way to see that like that is part of the process. It's like something really valuable and like um, definitely just part of learning the studio. So I think it'd be really cool to have this. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you think it would have been effective to have something like this and then a discussion with Arjun to like place it in more context like before like from the outset of studio um I mean I think it does the explanation on its own pretty well um if that's what you're asking like I think it'd be really cool to have it as a primer but then I feel like having it to go back to because like yeah you read it before you start your like design like process but like you don't actually get it until you're like stuck at that wall and then you have to refer back to it so like yeah it's a good idea to read before so you like kind of know a little bit of like what like what I, when i walked in here and i was like what I, what do they mean studio like i didn't i don't know i didn't know what that meant until i actually like had to like work on designing something and then to be able to go back and like like use it i think would be a dually um functional yeah it's yeah uh, back to what I was saying earlier, it's not really a, like a tool to teach someone how to design something exactly. like possible. It's kind of um, a way to uh, facilitate the learning. The, it's almost like learning how to learn how to design. Yeah. That's like, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it kind of, like going in, I had, I had like no idea that I had to do all this stuff. I had no idea what design was at all. And, and I think if someone prepared me to, um, to what I could expect to do in a design studio, then, then maybe I would have done that a little bit sooner. Yeah, because I don't think it tells you what to do. I think exactly. it just tells you that it's okay that you do, you're not you don't know right. what you're doing. Okay, I don't know if this is helpful for students, but um, Noah and I like both have talked a lot about trying to do a project. We have like an idea that we can't think content for, but the content kind of fits the idea, which is that we watch this video and it's asked about like they like group they have like these floating bubbles on the screen. things for like common words and feelings and then they group them together and put them on the bubble and so like all the people right now who are like tweeting about being happy or tweeting about being confused and I 
thing about that too is that like seeing other people's feelings and being able to group them into your own is like I like the idea of that. So the <laughs> No, just like coming on that because one of the things that I thought was kind of fascinating about this idea is like we have all I think talked about the frustration that can be experienced in this class, and I, I think the knowledge that that experience like that feeling is common, like there's something really reassuring about that. And I think what I really liked about um, the thing that you were saying where it's like a squiggle and you're like kind of like going through it and there would be like pit stops and like different like these nodes that you all have highlighted. Um, what I really liked about that was kind of the idea that students would be able to go to a specific node where they feel like they are in the design process and like essentially like watch a video or like see something that like one of us has produced about like how we dealt with a potentially a problem in that node or how we interacted with that particular part. Like I really, I think that idea is, is really, um, promising because like this whole like this whole situation about like how you have to research first before you get an idea like I think we've all felt about that like everyone was like oh we're gonna come up with something right now and then we're gonna like learn about bioethics later yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> like to be honest having been, been able to like go to a website and be like okay like I'm at the start of this like, big squiggle like what should I do like we've all had this experience of like being immensely frustrated that we can't even move forward and so I think just like having a tool to like you said like learn to learn to design or whatever <laughs> I, that, I, I just wanted to like reiterate that I think it's a really cool like birth of an idea. So I just think it would be really valuable. Um, no, just what I wanted to originally say, I think this idea is really cool because um, it's very candid, which is real. Um, and I think it's a really good way to integrate our journey map into it because if you're seeing other people's work, effort, their struggles, their impact, whatever it is, you're, I'm also going to want to contribute to that as a student, I think. Um, so I think it's a good way to generate everyone's ideas and put it somewhere. Nice. How it comes together. So it's also an invitation for the next cohort yeah. to keep adding to it, sort of, which, and which is a moment of reflection then, which is a good thing. So, oh, did you? Yeah. So I um, uh, was in on some of the conversations about different things this could be the report out and the experience narrative, et cetera. And I really um, am hearing from several people the idea of, so again, I'm going to just sort of call it the student's guide to studio. Okay. Whatever, whatever that looks like. And I too really like the idea of, you know, you can go to a squiggle and then hear where we'll talk about, you know, and then I remembered, oh, right, what is it? <laughs> but, 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 but I think Emily said something very important here, which is that it comes from the students is something intrinsically Arjun and I can't do. Even if we said the exact same words with the exact same intonation, right, put it, you know, and dress like you guys, you know, that, that you know, we <laughs> didn't experience the students, <laughs> which, <laughs> let's see, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? It, it, we functionally cannot <laughs> perform that. And there are a lot of, um, I don't hear you guys saying, let's ex explain the theory of studio. And I don't hear you guys saying, here's the how to. But what I do hear you saying is, for certain processes and experiences in life that are, the fancy word is ineffable, that can't be captured through pro proposition. And so you need experiential knowledge, but you need scaffolding along the way. And sometimes what you need is reassurance. And sometimes what you need is orientation. Like, oh, I'm not caught. This is where I'm supposed to be feeling this frustrated. It's at least you've got the meta knowledge. Oh, I'm not fucking up. This is just action. Right. And then there's also stuff <laughs> like, there are some good tips, you know, that if you guys say them, yeah, it, it, we don't need to have Arjun say it again, because we will say it, and it, it will be taken up in a different way. So I really think this is great. I also love what Rosemary said at the end, that it will be an invitation to the next cohort students to add to this could be the beginning of a living thing. Um, it really makes me think of, so I'm really involved in the SCAPE here, um, the school oh. retreat, and um, it's based on my reflection. And when people, we ask students to give talks, like candid, genuine, authentic talks about their experiences. And what's really interesting is that we always tell them, like, don't give advice. Like, you're not, this talk is not supposed to be an advice talk, it's like a reflection talk. And like, if you, someone will learn the same lessons that you want to give advice for, 
but like, like they'll reject if you say like all people have this, but if you said I experienced this, they'll get the lesson because like that's your experience and like they can't, like you can't invalidate someone else's experience like that when they're like up sharing it in front of a room. So it's like, so I feel like what we're trying to go for, it's not trying to be like an advice giving tool, it's trying to be like, this is our experience, like, like it or not, like this is what we felt and they will take the lessons as they want or don't want. Also on that note though, kind of the downside, we actually need you to write on this. <laughs> Also, if you're uncomfortable writing it up there, then feel free to talk to any of us. Thank you. Um, I was just going to say this could also be a helpful tool um, because I know that this class is like the first of kind of the new type of learning, so you can use this almost as research okay. for you guys to later reflect on and say, okay, this is what students appreciate it. Yes, this is where the paid it, more scaffolding would have been helpful. Yeah. Voice, yeah. Absolutely. So I. Yeah. 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 Yeah.